Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today marks an uptrend in inflation. Typically, three inflation reports or three reports of anything confirms a trend. And the trend for inflation does not look good. Inflation came in hotter than everyone's expectations. Like, quite literally everyone. Core inflation month over month came in positive 0.36%. Yes, it actually comes in as the full decimal point down to the specific number. Even though you see the headline number as 0.4 today, it actually wasn't quite 0.4. It was 0.36. Nonetheless, doesn't matter. It came in way hotter than estimates. The average estimate, the median forecast was 0.27%. There's a rounding effect here. So it came in at 0.36%. It was rounded up to 0.4, but not quite that high. The median forecast was 0.27%. That means it would have been revised or rounded up to 0.3%. Now, here's the deal. None of your major banks expected this high of a number. The highest estimates were from Citigroup at 0.33%, as well as Barclays at 0.31%. The average bank was like 0.25, 0.28, even JP Morgan, 0.28, Morgan Stanley, 0.25, uh, TD was at 0.26, Bank of America, 0.24. Basically, this was hotter than your wildest imaginations. This was like a two standard deviation miss on inflation. Now that begs the question, what comes next for our markets? And that's exactly what we're going to get into here in this video. You're seeing a big rise in treasury yields today. You're getting above a breaking point, if you will. It's a quote unquote breaking point. It's what a lot of market participants have pointed out as the level in which stocks could start to break at and you're there today in fact you're well above that today that's not exactly great you also got some news out of the middle east that there is an imminent attack coming from iran on israel and that could have big implications for inflation and just overall geopolitical tensions let's go ahead and dive into your biggest news stories of the day today you need to know if you are an investor in today's stock market and yeah what a rough day. The Nasdaq is down about 1%. The Russell is really getting clobbered today. The Russell is down over 3%, really seeing a huge gap down on the Russell, and more pain could be to come. But first, before we get into all of your other breaking news today, including the Fed minutes, take a look at this chart. If you look at three month annualized, six month annualized, or just year over year numbers for core CPI, they're all in the upwards pointing trajectory, especially your three month annualized, you're starting to get way up there again. And that's not great at all. Really, the Fed's not going to be cutting rates anytime soon if we take a look at what the markets are currently pricing in june is off the table july off the table now the markets are pricing in the first cut for september 18th 2024 let's be honest you're probably not going to get a cut this year because the breakdown in inflation is troubling here you can see super core is light blue super core has been trending upwards that's not great the biggest component of inflation these days is by far shelter and in fact if you took out shelter if there was no shelter inflation which you know that's not gonna be going to happen but if you took that out you would be sitting right at about two percent slightly under two percent for the consumer price index year over year but what you're actually starting to see here is a reacceleration in goods inflation. Now, goods was a major part of inflation back in 2021 and 2022. And you're starting to see the first signs of that again. There's a couple different ways you get goods inflation because normally you actually see disinflation in goods and a lot of inflation in services, right? Because if you think about the dynamic of pricing pressures in those two categories, services and inflation, services tend to be very uh, labor intensive, right? People come mow your yard, you get a haircut, you see concert, concerts, whatever it is. Services tend to be labor, um, uh, very, very high in labor. 
Okay. Now, goods tend to be very automated, right? You're yeah. think about an assembly line, right? Think about uh, robots doing a lot of assembly work. That's why you tend to actually see disinflation or deflation over time in some goods categories. Well, if you think about what actually pushes the the inflation up in goods, your goods inflation is going to be highly dependent on oil on commodity cost as well as to some degree wages so wages have been going up they've slowed down a little bit but they're still going up that's been very inflationary oil super inflationary so far in 2024 and that could only get worse we'll talk about that here in this video odds are it does get worse from here and we see more oil inflation not great mix these things together and you could see a continuation or a start i guess of a new trend in goods inflation and that's really bad now super core it, that's trending upwards as well but it's trending up at a pretty slow pace shelter is another big issue you're not going to get shelter inflation coming down because there has been so much immigration into the u.s it's coming to an inflection point people need somewhere to live and as you're getting more and more, uh, you know, people coming into the country, there's more of a demand for shelter. And we're just not producing homes enough, apartments, places to live. And I don't see that inflation subsiding anytime soon. So that's a real problem. I don't think we're going to get a lot of progress on inflation anymore. And that is specifically what the Fed said today in the Fed minutes. Quote, the Fed wants more confidence that inflation is moving towards the 2% target. The meeting minutes indicate. Now, the minutes are basically like a transcript or report of the last Fed meeting. So this minutes report was already put together before the CPI report came out today. And yeah, you're not getting any more confidence at all that inflation is falling based on this inflation report that we've seen that's why you're now expecting the first cut in september and this becomes problematic for the markets because if you keep pushing out the first cut you could start bringing up the conversation about raising rates again give it two months if inflation continues to rise the fed's going to be talking about raising rates again and that becomes the bigger issue for the markets i don't think we're there yet because year over year inflation is still like around three percent right 2.8 percent depending on what you're looking at Co uh pce is like 2.8 percent headline uh cpi is at like 3.8 percent so there's a big difference on what you're looking at but when the federal funds rate is 5.25 to 5.5 percent uh just i guess generalized economics um understanding is you want to get the federal funds rate above inflation to bring inflation down so right now there's net restriction on the economy I think to some degree that's correct, right? Housing, autos, lending, definitely restrictive. Services, goods, probably not. The Fed tools really don't affect that until people start to lose their jobs and they stop spending as much, which is probably the ultimate goal of the Fed's tools anyways. But nonetheless, yeah, this is really bad. We were hoping to see this trend go away of inflation rising now i will tell you for the bulls a little bit of good news is you did bounce today at that 50 day moving average on the nasdaq so it definitely could have been worse you're not under that yet and if you do get under that that's where you set yourself up for even larger downside down to about 419 would be your 100 day moving average so you did hold support there so not all is bad but definitely does not look good as of right now now the big problem i think going ahead is this continuation in commodities pressure okay oil is definitely going higher today oil is up 1.04 percent today you're at 82 dollars a barrel for uso and uh you're you're almost you know getting back to some of those higher points we've seen in 2022 when there was a lot of goods inflation now i don't care what it is whether it's these one a day vitamins this arizona green tea you know this tylenol i didn't manufacture any of it it was all brought here some way shape or form so you know it was shipped to the store in one way shape or form and that's why you could start to see more goods inflation and that would be a problem even on a technical basis it does look like you have a cup and handle formation that could be forming on oil which if you're a 
uh, you know, technical guy, then you're going to say, yeah, oil looks primed for a continued run here. Now, the catalyst for that could be already happening. It says... This article, which really shook up the markets today, caused a lot more volatility in markets. It says U.S. sees missile strike on Israel by Iran. Proxies as imminent. Iran and proxies may strike Israeli military and government sites. Attack would mark a major widening of conflict in the Middle East. Now, we don't know exactly um, when that will be. It says possibly using high-precision missiles, and it may happen in the coming days, according to people familiar um, with this situation. Now, as I've stated before here on this channel, the Strait of Hormuz, this is an interactive chart of oil tankers, and here's, here's Iran. If there's conflict with Iran, there's going to be maybe less oil traffic through the Strait of Hormuz, and that becomes very problematic for the global oil markets, which becomes problematic for bringing uh, down or keeping down uh, goods inflation, which could lead to higher oil and more goods inflation. Now, that article from Bloomberg came out one hour ago. Ten hours ago, Iran reiterates their promise to retaliate against Israel over the killings. Israel bombing the embassy, the Iranian embassy in Syria. And then Israel, quote, threatens powerful response in Iran's territory if it attacks from its own soil. So there is a lot of tensions over there. And those tensions, they're not going to be good for inflation. And that's why this Middle East situation is something to watch. And it could have an actual effect on our markets because it could have an actual effect on inflation which will have an effect on what the fed decides to do now also important to consider as you're heading into earnings season so jp morgan wells fargo blackrock city progressive and state street report earnings um coming on friday now that's going to be the first indication that we have of big big bank earnings and what earnings overall could look like that could move the markets coming on Friday but we do have data coming out tomorrow that will be very important also you have the PPI month over month now the estimate is for 0.3 percent and last month was 0.6 percent now CPI is consumer price index PPI is producer price index so if producers prices are going up that tends to lead to consumer prices also going up and that's why ppi is a big one we want to be watching for if those producer prices are going up odds are those costs are going to be passed on to consumers and that data comes out tomorrow 8 30 in the morning you will also get initial jobless claims for last week expecting that around 218 thousand or so uh if 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 that jumps you know or falls that can be a catalyst as well fed williams will speak at 8 45 in the morning fed collins around noon fed bostic at 1 30 p.m and that is pretty much it all of those times are eastern standard time zone so uh yeah fed speakers tomorrow more data likely means more volatility for the markets and odds are in my personal opinion it's really just a matter of time before you do see a larger uh correction event in the nasdaq you've you've definitely broken into what looks like now is a downtrend now i don't know specifically what's going to happen over the next couple of days but i'll tell you over the next couple of weeks or months you are likely going to see some downside from here so do what you will with that information, whether it's because of inflation reports continuing to come in bad, whether it's Fed speakers tomorrow that are hawkish or PPI that comes in bad tomorrow, the Middle East situation. I don't know exactly what it is. Throw earnings in there. There is high expectations for earnings. If earnings underwhelm, that's going to be very problematic as well. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section. You guys have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.